controversial subjects with the facts can be tense. But we are a sub science here to make things make sense. Hey guys, before we get into today's <laughs> podcast, first want to say it is so funny. It is very educational, but it is very explicit. Yeah, a lot of uh, talk about <laughs> us. You learn a lot about me. Yes. Uh, so a lot it, about our friend Natalie. <laughs> there's story, there's sex stories and stuff. So if, if you have kids around or if you're just not in the mood for explicit conversations, but I do want to say it's extremely interesting and educational. <laughs> just wanted to put this morning before we jump in. Otherwise, enjoy the podcast. So we are here with Natalie Norman <laughs> and the the iconic topic of the cock, the mm. member, the, the phallus, <laughs> the weenie, the Willie, the Peter, the Johnson. <laughs> uh, My favorite toy. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we need to know what inspired <laughs> this idea. I think I feel like it's the fastest text response I ever got. What do you want to do, penises? <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, I have such a cute little story. <laughs> Um, like just first want to say like shout out to the penis like some are beautiful and like some smell like clean laundry have you ever experienced that wow. like naturally or is that someone using laundry detergent yeah I'm like is that the laundry detergent <laughs> seeping into that epidermis or are we talking pheromones honey I honestly didn't know and I was like I had to stop and be like, okay, like your balls are great, but like, why do they smell so good? <laughs> oh, wow. That is a beautiful thing to have said to you. <laughs> yeah, no, that's really nice. Because yeah. obviously like I'm... there can be insecurities around that. There can be fear around that. <laughs> no, I'm like really nice to the penis, but what if... <laughs> if only men could be that nice to my pussy. Anyways. <laughs> 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 Sorry. So basically this is what happened. Um, Two-ish years, three-ish years ago, I was on a date with some guy, and we were very, very drunk, and I think he was, like, hitting on me, and still I'm, like, not sure, but we were really <laughs> drunk, and he started telling me, like, oh, I've been thinking about one of your jokes before, anyways, and then it turned out he was talking about one of my jokes about penises, and then he was, like, yeah, condoms don't really fit well, and I was, like, excuse uh -huh. me? <laughs> it's, like, okay. He was, like, I was, like, he was like, um, yeah, like when I put a regular condom, condom on, it's like too tight. It feels like it's suffocating my dick. Oh, and I was like, my God. Brag. Yeah. And I was like, oh, my God. Like me so out of it, like so like not into what's going on. I was like, you know, you can buy bigger condoms. <laughs> <laughs> but and he yeah. was like, he was like, but if I buy a bigger condom, it's loose on the base. Oh. Okay, okay. So we're getting an image. Now of we're what getting this... a bit of like I'm picturing like a hammerhead shark or something. <laughs> right. And I was like, I was like, hmm, interesting. And then I was like, well, first of all, I'm pretty sure you can still find a condom. I was like, and I was like just offering solutions, like not picking up that this guy wants to fuck me at all. <laughs> You're like, I think he was flirting with me. Or he was like, am I? Cock is huge. Yeah, but not was, the base. I, <laughs> yeah, the base is weak. <laughs> and I was like, what about a cock ring? What about this? Anyways, I went home. We didn't have sex. <laughs> See ya. And my, and my mind was like, hmm, I've never seen a dick like this before. So I started like Googling it. And then I found out it was an evolutionary trait. Mm. Because like A for example, it is not super common, but it's like, apparently i mean you guys know this should i explain what i know oh, yeah, yeah i would love to know yes. what your googling found <laughs> she's like she's like apparently is <laughs> penises are an evolutionary train <laughs> well i was like i was like baseball dick <laughs> oh baseball that's it that's it a baseball okay baseball yeah. bat baseball dick baseball bat. i was like baseball baseball, bat. Bat. baseball yeah. balls baseball, yeah, baseball balls and all that. baseball bat yeah, okay. So cool. like baseball bat dick and I was like, hmm, and then it came up like hammer and I was like, hmm, and I tried to find porn. I've never seen it. Anyways, what I came to <laughs> reading about it was that uh I would say like years and years ago. <laughs> <laughs> You know, when we were hunters and gatherers. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Oh, That's years. a science communicator right that there. We true. love to go, go to the hunter gatherers. Hunter -gatherer. yeah. Hunters and gatherers. <laughs> and, um, you know, so like the women would be like gathering at home or like staying There's no home. There's no homes, but yeah. <laughs> home base. Home, home base. base. Home base. Sorry, sorry, Come sorry. On. I was picturing a structure with heating. Uh, wow. <laughs> Do you not know your size? <laughs> okay, well, we also have to say women were all th also hunters. They found that out this year. They hunted uh, and they gathered way more than men. Men literally did nothing. Continue. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> shocking. <laughs> yeah, <I know>. <laughs> so anyways, <laughs> apparently the men would go gather and the women would be left to their own devices. 
And sometimes some men would stay behind and they would have some like intercourse. Um, <laughs> let's not pretend it was like anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are you talking about men on men right now? No, no, I'm talking about the women. Oh, okay, my, my mind's would, in the gutter. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, the women would stay behind and have okay. sex with whatever men were behind. Okay, yeah, true, true, true. And then their, like, <laughs> partners would come back from gathering and be like, this woman is my woman. And... <laughs> Would fuck her. Natalie, what are you reading? <laughs> like, <laughs> this is not this Nature is magazine. Wait, I'm getting to it. Okay. I'm getting to it. I'm getting to it. This Hunter is the more you were trying to find. Wait, they come back and they have sex with their like primary partner. Okay. And when their dicks go in, the reason it was shaped like that was so it would disperse the sperm of the okay. other person they might have fucked. There we go. So that Percent. their sperm becomes the predominant sperm and their lineage carries on. Okay. And Okay, we Thank have an you. evolutionary PhD student yeah, with go us into today. <laughs> evolutionary biology of penises. It's like a legit field of study, and I just think you'd be really good at it. <laughs> I'm changing jobs. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch, t- like you, um, like yeah, th- it's so true. Like that, you explained it. Also, the the whole time you were explaining this guy who was like the condoms don't work, I was picturing him. You, I thought the punchline was going to be like he was putting them on backwards. So it felt like so tight. You know, like if <laughs> yeah, you ever yeah. try to put one on upside down, you gotta grab like, the doesn't tip go. And roll. He's like pulling it and then, and then it's so <laughs> loosened at the bottom because he's just ripped it. I mean, I'll be honest, that particular man would do that as a joke. <laughs> Okay. But um, <laughs> continue. But yes, you're absolutely right. Like the penis evolution in humans specifically, like having large heads <laughs> is to like help sperm competition to like pull the sperm out that maybe another male had already stuck in the woman and mm. get it out to be able to put theirs. And they've like experimentally tested this. Like men with bigger heads have like a bigger chance of like pulling out the sperm. Uh, it's- so it's literally like because that head of it would like the like friction would be pulling like, out literally sperm and, like pull pushing out their sperm. Thing. It kind of makes oh, sense. Okay. And I it, see the way I saw it was it was like uh, the sperm was like the dick was going in and like like a hammer pushing everything like, out of the way. But yeah. it's also like kind of pulling it think, back. Yeah, right? think of how like the like the mushroom head aspect of it is to literally scoop it out back, not fully Whoa. out but further away. Yeah. And part and of the, the reason is like pss, 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 pss. like humans have disproportionately long dicks compared to most other primates. Okay, I'm um, horny. <laughs> yeah, it's like this. I've also looked at so many dicks for this podcast, um, both human and. <laughs> animals felt oh, okay <laughs> i have to okay <laughs> we're uh, learning a lot about you <laughs> i mean yeah. i'm very excited uh but uh, yeah beauty and the beast was my sexual awakening but it was gaston's toe not the beast <laughs> uh, yes. anyway long dicks are because it actually helped to place the sperm closer to the cervix which is like one of the most like inner parts um and so that was the competition amongst males is to have long dicks with big heads so that it could pull the sperm out and one final fact is the reason they believe that after ejaculation, males, like the refractory period comes yeah. and it gets soft so fast is because you don't want to pull your own semen out. So after Whoa. you've ejaculated, you go soft so that you can't accidentally like pull your own sperm out. I love that. Yeah, isn't that cool? I have a lot I, more other facts that are just like really going to blow your mind, but we're going to wait. That's so cool. Like that is really interesting. Because like... I've, I- yeah. You, sorry. No, you no, go. no, we're no. All no too you excited. go. We're, we're all we are too so excited. excited. <laughs> we're about to I'm just like, I'm just like, when I make men all over the place come, and they, and I see their refractory periods all the time after me. They refract hard because I did them good. All right, your turn. I, <laughs> I just like, I find it so like, listen. Obviously, I'm not a science head <laughs> or a science buff, but I think it's just. It's so, so interesting. And like also as a feminist, I'm like so offended by their dicks. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Okay, so and you like, ew, okay. Like looking at all these flaccid, like scientific diagrams of dicks, and like you know, in like a science journal, how they'll like show an actual real like fleshy dick, and it's like the most dis- it's like I'm like, did you choose the most disgusting dick? Because they can't have like a beautiful porn dick and then be like, This is the dick, because everyone's it's it like everyone these gross <laughs> dicks. And you're learning about like, you know, the seminal vessels and the vast deference and all these things it's not very that it, sexual. I found it very unsexual to learn about dicks. But like, do you find the sexuality can pierce through the fact that we're like the epididymis holds the sperm and it like, like <laughs> well, I'm talking about it. Like, 
this is the thing is like you're like really listening to those scientific words and I'm just picturing the whole time being like when's is it going in me when is it going in me when do I get to kiss the tip (laughs) okay this is one way that it was described in a scientific article which was disgusting in its flaccid (laughs) unerect state the shaft of the penis has the feel of a dense sponge encased in very smooth eyelid type skin (laughs) okay well that's disgusting it's so gross. <laughs> but that is actually true. It is island type skin. Oh my god. You know when you masturbate too much and it starts to chafe? Uh, it's like rubbing your eyes too much. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> now I'm like, producer, which we don't have. Edit that out. <laughs> Edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> I I mean I have okay. We're so excited. We don't know even know where to keep going. Okay. You have something to say, go first. <laughs> you want me to wait, you want me to go first? Because I got more information. <laughs> okay, no, first, okay, then I have a question that's not sciencey. There's some okay, do do you like love dicks? <laughs> <laughs> Natalie Norman, it's her brand. <laughs> it's literally my brand. It's like it's like I'm love them, I welcome them. I do have like my preference is only I have one small little preference, and that's honestly it. And what's the preference? Is it a baseball bat dick? (laughs) (laughs) No, I haven't seen it. I never saw that guy's dick. Oh, wow. Um, My preference is that um, it's not that, listen, I understand there's a purpose for uh, hair down there. Mm. And it's not for it to be fully moved. It's for it to be, like, well kept. kept well kept you can keep it oh, i just but like i just dated someone well let's not say dated i had my <laughs> fool around with someone and it was like the wild west down there i was like w- and his dick was huge and i still was like where are you <laughs> okay. like the weeds i need to come out i need to come out <laughs> greg has i an am issue. full bush mcgee over here <laughs> like I, you don't trim at all no like ever <laughs> And like I will say, it's just not happy. I will say that okay, like I, I like okay. We can talk average size penis five inches seventeen five point one seven inches is the average erect. Size. Yeah, no flaccid. No. No. Oh, sorry. Erect. 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 Suddenly, imagine very, very like, intimate. well, mine's a hunk and seventeen, so I thought I was flaccid. Both <laughs> no. me and Mitch are like, no. no. <laughs> It's 13 centimeters erect. So anyways, I like my dick. Okay, I got a good dick. But I will say when I do a little bit of trim, I'm like, wow, it's looking better. Like, I'm like, why am I not doing this? Putting in the effort. I just, I don't know. Mitch, I love you. I've been with you for a long um, time. I yeah. just, and I like it. I love to be naked in the summer. Just like give, put me anywhere where I'm not going <laughs> to illegally get, I'm naked. And like the bush just helps me feel like I'm, you know. The way <laughs> Natalie is looking at you right now, she's like, okay, good, good for you. Yeah. Okay. yeah you like, that's, I mean, that's I'm trying to like, defend it, but now I'm like, what you, you just said your one caveat is my, what I have. Your problem. Oh, God. Yeah. But like, you're not going to fuck me. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. True. Well, like, you never know. The world is a beautiful, fluid place. Okay. I mean, okay, wow. <laughs> He's hitting on me on the podcast? <laughs> Publicly. But, but you're Publicly. like, no, 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 no. The full bush got to go. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not. I will still sleep with someone who has a bush. I'm just saying it's like a, a preference. slight preference. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I understand uh, yeah. the I think, preference. I think Mitch might have it, too. I think Mitch might have it, too. I think I'm in the wrong here. Uh, Greg, it is so easy to trip. I know, I know, I know. I'm not, I know and there's I know. not like a specific look I want. I don't need you to like give it a moment. I, I swear to God, every day I look down at my, my hairy, 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 hairy bush and I think, oh my God, I'm definitely going to do that today. Oh, I'm going to trim today. And then, and then the day the day starts to go by and I go, oh, I'll just do it tomorrow. I'll just do it tomorrow. I said I'll do it tomorrow for probably like two and a half years. <laughs> That's honestly, I literally like more than anything trim my bush. <laughs> yeah, I know. <not> so- <laughs> <laughs> like I, like during quarantine, I, you know I'm not joking. Yeah, you know it's like I'm it's doing. like a two hour process. You like put on Enya and candles. Like, no, I literally do. <laughs> like I have like a bay window, and like if my neighbor were to come out on our shared mutual porch at night. <laughs> It would be me on my couch trying to wax my ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the ass of it all. Oh, what? There's, oh, nothing, an on there's nothing more embarrassing than when you bend on over and start to shave or wax the ass. <laughs> I love it. Okay, whoa. <laughs> well, that. that felt forced a little bit, actually. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> 
Oh, wait, uh, we're one of the few mammals that don't have a bone in our penis. I was going to say that as well. What's it's called, called a baculum. Baculum. So, so al- then what? Yeah. So the, I, I have a question. Yeah. What is it when a man's penis breaks that breaks? Uh, they, <laughs> that is a, a Do bad. Men's penises and break? it would be like it would be like the it would be the blood vessels and the tissues. Like There's popping. no bone. LOL at you even thinking there was a bone in there, <laughs> Natalie. Like I didn't what? think there was a bone, okay. but I know someone whose penis like, broke. Oh okay, yeah, it would, it would it wouldn't have to do with the breaking of. I a have bone. actually heard that too. You're right. It must so it must just be. There's lots of fascinating like, like blood vessels blood vessel that can or... pop. Yeah, yeah. Ugh. Uh, the blood vessels, like the main ones, are on the top. You know when you see like in porn, and they got like a veiny dick. Those the biggest blood, va- the biggest veins are at the top of the shaft. In the dick or in the body? On the no, sorry, in the dick. <laughs> like like, like it's like there's like there's two big veins yes. along the top of the shaft, and then they go down and like become disparate underneath the penis, mm-hmm. and then the nerves are also mostly at the mushroom, which like also every science article is like the mushroom type, like an uncooked mushroom. I'm like just stop, but but the mushroom. <laughs> part is where the most of the nerves are like i think we know that too i'll share <laughs> one tip about blowjobs it's like really lick along that vein <laughs> okay <laughs> okay okay <laughs> all right well it's like if there wasn't an explicit like e on this podcast to begin with it's now there Wait, re- I, have, I, <laughs> I, can't, more I can't if there's one I have one tip about blowjobs it's really lick along that vein <laughs> <laughs> but with your tongue tight, anyway. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god no. Wow! Oh, uh. <laughs> I'm very oh. good at blowjobs. Oh it's a part god. of my culture. Um, oh my god! That's amazing. No, like- I'm like really, really good. But wait, do you guys know this? Maybe you can like explain <laughs> it to me. I heard, re- well, I read recently that men with bigger balls tend to be more fertile. Oh. That is tends to be true. That's yes. good for me. I have really good balls. <laughs> <laughs> but do you know that you have very like droopy, droopy balls? balls. I'm just like picturing <laughs> our parents listening to this episode. I'm actually gonna text every, my mom and be like, "Don't listen to the penis." I'm about to say something. I'm like, "Do I want your parents don't listen?" My mom, mom. No, I know. Oh my god, I'm texting. Um, her. <laughs> but so like, it's interesting because. Uh, Humans have small balls compared. They have long dicks compared to other primates, but small balls because there's there were, were tend to be more monogamous. So they think that oh. animals or primates, especially that have large balls, it's because they're competing more. So they have to have more fertile, like better sperm, more sperm. And so they have found that in humans too, like men with larger balls. Oh, okay, so it's the bigger the ball, not the droopy the sack. True. Like okay. I, I don't know. Have you ever like <laughs> now? I'm like, how big are my actual balls? <laughs> Maybe How do you big. not know? <laughs> no, I mean like I'm like I'm like I like I am like I have big balls. Like when I look around like Hanlon's and everyone's naked, I'm like my ball sack is like droopier. But then I don't actually like I've ne- like the touching of my balls. It's like and the touching of other balls. I've never I've never thought to you know kind of close my eyes and touch many balls and go oh how big is my ball. Right, like, like, but now I want to do that. Is it I a- measure everyone's balls with my mouth. <laughs> oh my. You're like, well, this one's really filling it up like a oh big plump God. plum. That's about two <laughs> tablespoons. Yeah. No, but like, like, listen, listen. Two I'm tablespoons. Very, well, I was just you really little... should. None of our parents should listen to no, this no, because no, 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 I'm. No, no, no. No. I'm gonna keep going, but like, <laughs> like I'm really. I think the balls are very um, missed in the experience for men. Mm-hmm. That's true. And I think why why are we avoiding this? This if we're if we're here for pleasure, like if that's the purpose, like let's take it all in, let's do that's this. True. So I do have some specialty tricks with balls. <laughs> so, so after having so many balls in your mouth, you kind of get the sizing of like some fit really easily into your mouth, and some don't. Oh my god, I love that. When they fit really easily, you can be like, well. But you got to get that checked out. The fertility is low, hon. But I'm going to keep going. But you probably worry about your fertility. <laughs> yeah, like. <laughs> well, maybe they're just more like a better suit for a monogamous partner. You never know. Yeah, true. That's <laughs> right, nice, right, 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 right. You know, that could be you a know benefit what? on both sides. <laughs> Am I so gross about blowjobs? I like take them so seriously. <laughs> no, no, Good. it's a sport. I'm sure everyone Go appreciates it. it who you yeah, encounter. it's an art. It is it that's like listen, I know this is related but not really related. I'm like really into sexual health, science and like sexuality and like there's a lot of books out there about um vulvas and like how to turn them on and like they're like 
increased desire. It's like SES and SAIS. I don't know if you've ever read no. like about sex drives. And anyways, I'm not explaining it well because I'm not a scientist. But I think there's also we talk about blowjobs as if they're like really easy like and like really ta- just like whatever. yeah, you just yeah. do that. And I think like all sexual experience, just like vulvas with dicks, we should really yeah. make the experience as best as we can because otherwise, what the fuck are we doing? Oh my here? god, I, hey, is... I'm crying. Beautiful. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah, put that on a t-shirt. You're doing God's work. <laughs> yeah. <they're>... Oh, I <laughs> am. I think that's really true. I think a lot of men, like, this is also just, like, the problem with toxic masculinity is that it, it affects men as well. Like, people don't want to talk and be vulnerable and be like, what actually is more pleasurable to me? Yeah. And maybe there's, so like, true. maybe there is the taboo of just, like, it's easier for a man to get off. And so, like, guys don't have to think about, well, what's, like, the most desirable way to do yeah. that? That's amazing. Because the flesh of the penis is connected to the anus hole. So, you know what I mean? The toxic mask is stay away. But it's like, you got to put a finger in there. You got to put a finger in there. Something I read recently also about the whole apparatus is that you can actually massage the prostate from outside. Did you know that? The no. prostate from outside of the anus. Like, hole. where do you wear? As a gay yeah. man, I'm like, yeah, all right. <laughs> I'm kidding. Like, you gotta you, get you in there. To, have you seen instructionals? A, it, of course, I have. <laughs> okay, show us. She's literally standing well, up and has one hand <laughs> to the left. And she, wait, there's a whiteboard appearing behind her. Oh my God, she has whiteboard <laughs> markers. Model. Wait, she's, she's like, like, drawing <laughs> diagrams. <laughs> well, this is like, it's very hard to find out about this. I read about it and I was like, once again, like, my brain is like, what is this? She's so on the dark web coding. Like, okay, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. So basically, it's like when the shaft is up and the balls are here, there's a certain area where you can massage the prostate from outside. Wow. It obviously has to be a very deep massage. Oh, sure. But it's recommended if you're with a partner who's like, fearful of anal play to try doing it that way from the outside first from the outside to get into it because it also feels really good and like why are we ignoring the prostate that is true it's like i'm going to look that diagram up (laughs) yeah yeah. i'm really into like all of it and it's that's also the thing is like the penis is so interesting just like the vulva there's so many parts and like listen i read this book on blowjobs recently (laughs) (laughs) okay (laughs) You gotta lick the vein at the top with a hard tongue. <laughs> Listen, when I say it's a part of my culture, Jewish girls are like really focused on blowjobs. Like I can't explain it. You were not being hyperbolic. <laughs> no, not for a second. But I read this like blowjob book and it talked about like the motions around men and their and their cocks, but it also talked about the different ways we can touch them that are new and exciting because I like, once again, I think it's like very much like up and down and I know it, whatever. Anyways, I just find it all interesting. Now tell me about, I like feel like I could talk about this forever, but I also know that we also have to talk about the environmental factors affecting dicks. Yeah. Them (laughs) shrinking. (laughs) Them (laughs) shrinking. Do you want to go through that first or should I talk a little more about like the evolution of dicks? Yeah. Keep doing the evolution. We'll end end with like desperate, sad aspect of all of this. Having done research on this, I feel so overwhelmed because there's, you're so right. There's so much like from every perspective that I was like, I don't even know what to cover. every animal's dick. Yeah. And just like how they evolved, how humans dicks evolved. And I'm just like, there's a, I have a bunch of random kind okay. of facts because I was just like finding all these different things. Okay. I'm so, I'm um, so, so I'm just excited. I'm just going to like be staring over here while I look at them. So obviously human uh, penises are like so diverse between all other animals. It's like a big mystery. Why? But they think most of it's sexual. Uh, what do you call it? like uh, selection not evolution, but sexual selection. Yeah. So for the most part, like females choose dicks based on what is probably a sign of like high fertility and good genes. Um, and I love how those females are always choosing like the faggiest animals. Like every animal has to be like fucking pink oh, like and a, purple uh, and be like, hey batch, <laughs> hey batch, I'm a I'm a peacock batch. And it's like we're the only species that's like, yeah, I'll give a fuck. <laughs> um, I didn't realize that like so. Dicks can be so different. Like some animals have dicks bigger than their bodies. So like what? what? Uh, barnacles have dicks that are eight times bigger than their bodies. Earwigs have two dicks. Give me dicks. a barnacle. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, earwigs? Earwigs have two dicks. Snakes have like, it, they have two dicks, but it's like they've been split in half and they only use one of them. Um, so there's <laughs> all these different variations of dicks in all these different places. Great we, white sharks, two dicks besides baseball bats. Uh, where did they come from? The Obviously it's like a sexual, like it's like once animals 
came out of the oceans, I think, like when yeah. dicks evolved. Um, really? So when we were like water dwelling, like cephalopods, there were there were not penises. Yeah, we become land dwelling. So and, like, shortly after our sea dwelling ancestors migrated on land, creatures were pressured to quickly evolve genitalia. Whoa! I Did didn't know, know that. that. Me either. Because that that's make- kind of <sighs> crazy. Yeah, and it makes sense that why like, some mammals that are now in the water, which have like come from land yeah, back into like water, have penises. Yeah. yeah, but a fish would just like in like squirt onto oh, yeah. eggs and stuff. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? Like they would put eggs down and then they would just like spurt their squirt. And even like l- like even l- like well lungs were used when we were fish to like as flotation Float. devices. Yes. But as like breathing like it just I just feel like yeah a lot of things with cocks have lungs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. They 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 used um like the comparison for people who like don't totally understand sexual selection is even like deer antlers. So if you there's like so much variation between species. So like moose antlers are like completely different in shape and size but they're like all really similarly related. So that's wait, wait, wait. because of the pressure of the female. The antlers oh, okay. represent something and this is why every species has like even when they're closely related can have like completely different penises. Like a like a like a chimpanzee's yeah, penis versus exactly. ours. Yes. So Yeah, their penises are tiny. They're yeah, tiny. Very small but large balls. Big balls though. But no, I think chimps aren't tiny but gorillas have tiny dicks, I think. Yeah, and a lot or, of animals have dicks that actually go inside them when they're not hard. Yes, so that is another thing that Whoa. is like there's been a lot of debate of like why did why is uh, it still humans hanging or out other there? animals some animals evolve like dicks that got outside and them. a lot of okay. people a lot of animals have testicles that are on the inside too and it's like why is our junk hanging out like because it's like <laughs> it's not healthy it hurts there's a lot of theories crunch. about why okay wait stop pause side <laughs> note side note so once again back to this book i was reading about basically about vulvas and penises and sexual blah 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 blah. it's called come as you are great book highly recommended by cool. emily nagoski but basically she goes over the the um the way the uh the vulva like the vulva is and how everything like the our balls our version of the balls and we have the same parts yes. but they're just inward totally. yes yeah for sure it's the crazy clitoris to think and of, the and penis yeah. are made of like the same tissue and it's just like yeah. a change exactly yeah, yeah and actually the way, i uh go ahead well she has this uh, ongoing sentence throughout the book where it's like um we're all the same just positioned differently oh yeah totally. yeah no that's true and even in it, utero, like it, we all kind of start neutral or like more similar to the female. And then after certain hormones hit in the mother's stomach, like the ovaries or become testes and drop down. And the, um, the vulvas fuse. And when you look at ball sacks, you know, there's like that line on the ball sack. Yeah, yeah. That's it's like, also there. Yeah, it's the. But fusion. you know, it's also in the vulva. There's like a line inwards. That's like a small like seam almost. Yeah, yeah. Never, I think. Heard, never seen it. Never. I've uh, <laughs> certainly never seen that. <laughs> Truly, like I don't know anything about. Greg's vaginas, so really quiet sad. right oh, now. I've seen it. I've seen it. <laughs> I know he's seen it. I've <laughs> had many an experience. I once. I mean, my parents are not listening to this. This is explicit. I once ate out a girl with a tampon in. I love you. Yeah. Muzzle tough. You did it. That's exactly. God's work. So I just have to say, <laughs> did you know? I've seen it. Oh, you've seen it. I no. did know. And I liked it. I was going to say <laughs> one of the reasons, and this is like a personal, I'm like, I guess I'm just saying this on the internet and to people, but I like when you have an inguinal hernia, I had that when I was younger. It's because mm-hmm. in men, it's like, um, like your intestines go into like your ball sack and that's a hernia when the intestines like push through. So it can be in your stomach, but this kind is because when ovaries drop and become right. testicles, there there's like a hole there that has to make room for that. And so it's an easy place for something to push through. And so I had that problem. Is, okay, I is that had a surgery for is it. that the same kind of hole that I, drag queens tuck up their balls into them? I different? don't really know, but I, I guess think this so. is not accurate. <laughs> this is not accurate. <laughs> like I think t- some drag queens literally can push they put their, their balls, balls in them upwards. Yeah, and then, really? Yes. So that and it then looks they like they don't they have a penis. wrap it the dick and scrotum, which is just the sack. The scrotum's just the sack back. Mm-hmm. But I don't know how far up it actually yeah. goes or if it's just Is that like, painful? I think it think is. So. Like I've tried and it actually is not very comfortable. But I think if <laughs> yeah, you just I can't get imagine. used to it. Yeah. <laughs> the things people do for fame. It's um, like binding, I guess. It's like Yeah, what? yeah, that's true. It's kind of like binding. Like what? Binding. Like when binding. you bind your tits. Oh, wow. See, I didn't even know what that was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mitch, wow. read a book. I'm like, <laughs> like, is that specifically for like drag kings or just in general? In what general, is, in, general in general. Yeah, oh, I see. Like it. to just like flatten. So yeah. yeah, it's like, it's like, yeah, it's like 
it's a piece of fabric that like just holds everything down. It's incredibly uncomfortable. Yeah, but it's just um, like pressure. But on. like, yeah. Okay. Learn something new every day. Um, I'm trying to think of what else I can tell you. Oh, yeah, like chimpanzees. Most other primates have spiked penises. And so they've always Oof. wondered, like, why don't humans have spiked penises? Um, we believe that ours evolved to be smooth because of monogamy. Oh, yeah. It's that same thing. Because of, of like what? having small Sorry. monogamy. Okay. Like the competition to fight and spend resources on having all these extra features to compete with sperm is not as high in Homo sapiens. As unlike ducks who have a corkscrew <laughs> penis. Oh, I know about that corkscrew dick. I hate that. Oh my God. I we love ducks hate so that. much. But then whenever I look at them, I'm just like, oh, good Lord. You got a They're corkscrew perverts. down there. And not just, They're perverts. not just ducks. There's like lots of animals that have, even I think, I think uh, types of swine have corkscrew dicks as well. Um, okay, but why do dogs have similar dicks to us? Because they're our man's best friend. Man's best friend. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's really not that similar, Natalie. It's like this. It's like inside them, and then it comes out this nasty right, ass lipstick. Right, it's a lipstick. <laughs> and then I'm just like, is it that similar? <laughs> like, I don't know what kind of dicks you're blowing, but it's not that like, similar. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. Be honest. <laughs> Every time I see a dog dick, I'm like, I can't. I think, it's I bloody. Can't. It's like, it's like, okay, where's the... Yeah, why is it bloody? Where's your epidermis? Where's the skin, oh, no. hun? Don't let that out. <laughs> oh, I used to love my our dog doesn't have boners anymore. <laughs> oh yeah, well, before he was neutered, like he used to get them all. He the doesn't time. get them now. No. Sure oh, he, and I used to do this. Thing. When he's overexcited, it might happen, but it used to be like every. Day. Okay, this is psycho, and like at this point, it's like this isn't that bad. It's like if we're gonna get cancelled, we've already been cancelled on this episode. But it's like I used to do this. I love just dance and dancing, and I would dance in my basement. There's this one move where I. Would go down on the ground, kind of grind to the ground, and then I go boom, 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 and I like lift my ass up and and hit my crotch down and bang with my fist. And yeah. he would make enough of a loud noise that Ernie would always run down and I'd be on the ground and he'd just start humping me. <laughs> just like humping me like right <laughs> in my ass. That dance, and so then boom. I was just like, I fucking love this. So funny. So like Mitch would be watching TV. I'd just get on the ground and go boom, boom, boom. And then Ernie would come down and start humping my butt. I'd be like, hey, Mitch. Hey, man. <laughs> so I think it's like fully like routine with my dog. So me. Disturbing. And then also I used to like pick him up a certain way, like at parties and stuff and like just hold him and like kind of bump up and down and then he get a boner and then he just always have this discharge on my shirt and I was like guys look <laughs> guys <laughs> look <laughs> when I held her that's even too much for me <laughs> yeah not funny disgusting <laughs> like, anyway. it's like, and I'm like the queen of, of, of swallowing like that <laughs> I'm sad Too though. Much. I miss those days. I I remember the first <laughs> time I went down. I banged my ass in crotch and fist, and I looked at Ernie, and he was like, "What?" And I was like, "It's over between us." <laughs> Once he got neutered, he yeah. moved on. Oh my oh. god, he neutered years off. I love Mitch's face throughout this. <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> it's like. <laughs> Mitch, Picturing you're a scientist. This know. is science. I know it's science, but like having your dog hump you is not science. <laughs> it so I is. Mean, it's like you dumb little thing. True. No, I understand. Your hormones it's, are wrong. I grew up in a Catholic family, okay? I'm repressed. <laughs> okay, this is funny. I was looking up different names for dicks. One of them's pigskin bus. <laughs> nope. Nope. Absolutely not. <laughs> I, I think we should bring back one eyed trouser snake, though. I love that no. one. Okay. Like trouser snake is too That long. one feels religious to me. What about leaky hose? <laughs> leaky hose, like, you can't be honest. <laughs> tool? I like No, tool. that's... Wait, leaky hose is like, you got... Like, your cum just can't stop. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. True. It actually seems like you're sick. Oh, I think I thought I said you said linking hose. <laughs> oh, because it links into the other person. Yeah, and I that's was poetic. picturing like a hoe for some reason. Because oh, a that's linking like, hoe. That's like the thing that pulls, sometimes they call this mushroom a hoe, like how it pulls Okay, a linking hoe. Now that Not is a leaky a good one. hose. <laughs> okay, wait, sh sorry. I know we're talking about like names. <laughs> What was I? Ugh, I forgot my thought. It was like good, and I'm so sorry. Like it was sh definitely screams like schlong. <laughs> it was about oh, it was about like pre cum. Oh, what okay. about it? Can you say that again in that beautiful pre cum? <laughs> pre cum. Oh, it was about pre cum. <laughs> Where's the pre cum? So that's yeah, just that's like the fluids like getting excited, getting ready to ejaculate. Yeah, but you're right. Fluid. It's interesting because there can be such a difference between men of yeah. if at all or how much or how It's similar little. to women getting wet. Yeah. It's like helping. Is it? I, assume, I think so. It's I helping to lubricate. It's like lubrication, I assume. But the, 
see, I'm gonna, I'm curious. We're gonna have to do the science behind this because yeah, I haven't. Yeah, second, they're because, they're coming back on for our episode on pre-cum. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> which is my dream. Because pre-cum, from what I know about it, it's um, a way to expel the old sperm that's left inside the cock. And it's make a, room for the new like sperm. To kind of well, it, it says that it's clean a, it it's, out. It's a it's a loop. It's clearly a, a lubricant that prepares the urethra for the climax. Wow. And looks similar to semen. To so shut her down like that. Well, okay, but it's not necessarily <laughs> it a lubricant. It's not necessarily a lubricant of the sex. It's a lubricant of the actual like urethra. Urethra. Getting okay, ready okay. to Which ejaculate. Which actually sounds almost more yeah. similar to like. It is. Yeah, like yeah. it's a cleaning. It's a cleaning process. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah you're right. Anything that's in the way yeah. gets, gets because so that when you ejaculate. Because wetness in women from the, I think it comes from the barthule, barthmuleal glands. I can't Ooh, remember. Yes, Bark yes, glands. Yes. <laughs> but it's um, basically, so like another, I'm so obsessed with this book, by the way. You have to read it. Yeah, I'm excited again. to read Come it. Come as you are. Um, basically, it says, there's a thing that happens with women. It's called, and it happens with men sometimes. Sorry, we sh- with penis or vaginas, right, sure. vulvas. Let's get back. That's genitalia. But basically, when anything that um, <clears throat> seems arousing comes towards a vulva, it immediately starts getting wet. So it's not actually a sign of mm-hmm. being turned on. Mm-hmm. It's actually a sign of you preparing to allow something in. Mm, that's so and it's a very, It's a very important thing that we should all be learning yes, in health sciences. That's so true. Be- because, um, mm. you know, so many times, like especially if you consume porn like me, you're watching it and the woman's like, the, the man will be like, you're so wet. That means you're turned on, right. and her face is like completely <laughs> like stone yeah, cold. Yeah, that's so interesting, Natalie. And it's like so stone cold, and you're like, no, no she's, she's not. not. <laughs> yeah, and it's so like unfair yeah. for men to think that. It, like, it's such an important thing to understand, just for like how you all, everyone gets on the. It's just on the a right physio. Like yeah, a, it's yeah, just a body response. response. Totally. It's and then, so and then, so like in this book, it says always you should always be communicating with the person you're yeah. having sex with, and even men sometimes like they can get hard sometimes without actually being yeah, turned on. Totally. It's your body getting ready to create yeah. life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it That's says so, like <laughs> another thing that it says precum does is it neutralizes any acidity of urine left within the urethra, which is kind of it's interesting cleaning. and smart. It's yeah, yeah, it's literally oh, being cool. like so that to protect the sperm, we're gonna like neutralize the acid of urine. So it's like, it is, it's just kind of what you're saying. It's like all of these things that we've like created these like colloquial, like, oh, I'm hard. Like, oh, I'm wet. It's like, this is all just physiology and science that we've like, you know, created this like aura around, but it's actually quite simple and functional and Mm -hmm. like, well, yeah, like me being like, I'm wet literally could be being like, oh, a tampon is coming into me. Do you know what I mean? Like your body is preparing and uh, like also the, so penis with the cleaning and everything. (laughs) Um, do you think someone with more, this is just like a thought in my head, yeah. someone with more pre-cum is like someone who's like really got fertile because they really need know how to protect everything. Oh, wait, well, God. Here, I can talk about my thing right now because this is about male fertility. Okay. And you go. it's, um, ooh, it's bleak. <laughs> so it's like, it's like really <laughs> intense. It's really, really intense. So it's like male fertility, like definitely that concept of being like, oh, like, do they have more precum? Are they more fertile? It's like we're at this like crazy point where male fertility is decreasing so much. And the reason why I think this is so important, and we just made this video about this, and it's like gone, it's like gone pretty viral. It's like this in the sciences, it's a very new topic of discussion. But the reason it's so important is that when people have fertility issues, so often it's put on women. It's like, it's like you know, I don't, whatever the story is. that something is wrong with the woman when someone can't have it. You're yeah. telling me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, and it's just like, so one third of, to one quarter of all fertility issues have to do with the sperm. Whereas one third to one quarter of all fertility issues have to do with the egg. And then the rest have to do with a mix between the two. But this, the concept of infertility issues right now are so bleak because of sperm and sperm production. It's such a fragile process. And really what it is, is that we are consuming since like essentially the 1950s when we really started to use, and if you look around, you see it, all these plastics, it's, they're called phthalates. Uh, There's BPA, which we've heard a lot about, like BPA free water bottles, like that, those specific, they're called endocrine disrupting chemicals. So they actually mess with the hormones in men and they disrupt testosterone and the ability for penises to grow when you're young and the main issue is taint size so the actual the thing you're rubbing near the prostate that thing (laughs) and also just just (laughs) literally 
the ability for these sperm because they're not very they're not well obviously they're not intelligent they're not smart but sperm are like it takes a lot for them to get to the egg and there's so many specific biological functional things that we've just talked about that are really getting like are under attack from things in plastics pesticides and a lot of the products that we use so it's like pretty scary because it's like we have to figure out how we regulate those products out of our bodies and a lot of men don't realize this impact that they have on fertility and another thing is like if you go to a sperm bank and you're over 40 they're like leave because your sperm at that point the dna is more damaged like men have a biological clock when it comes to fertility and they don't realize this and it's like so older men will have like a, a kid with a younger woman they'll probably have a lot of fertility issues it'll 100 percent likely be the man then there could be really big issues with the actual birth and the ownership being put on the woman and people don't talk about this and it's like yeah you have a biological clock and it is your sperm and in fact eggs are like eggs don't have the same biological clock in that sense as the other aspects of pregnancy that are harder what but yeah, it's like, and penises just in general are shrinking because of these endocrine disrupting chemicals that we are now like obsessed with. It's just everywhere. We all use them. So, I have so many questions. Okay. First of all, <laughs> are they figuring out, and I'm sure they are, um, I imagine so, a way to increase sperm quality? Like, oh like, my just God. in terms of what, like, um, like, so basically, meds, or is that what you mean? Like, is there a meds, way to, like, meds, give meds. so not, it, not improve. really through meds, but if you do things like IUI, well, or I'm sure IVF, there's research into yeah. it. I'm sure there are like yeah. people yeah. testing like different substances, but it's really okay. The reason it's so scary is that, okay, smoking cigarettes. If a man smokes cigarettes, he has decreased his fertility immensely just by smoking cigarettes. So he can stop smoking cigarettes and then try and get pregnant. And that will really help if a man is inactive or, um, you know, spends like the studies are a lot on people who self proclaim that they like spend more than five hours a day watching TV. They're extremely infertile. Their sperm are not healthy. So it's like, there's that, but then there's also these chemicals. So phthalates, BPAs, DHPAs, these things that are in like, fast food packaging or soaps or all these different things that we use. The, the issue is that they, there's so many of them and they come together and it's really hard to study in isolation what they would do. So when you think right. about medicine, it's like you really need to understand biological pathways have very specific ways to combat things. But this is such an influx of like a vast array of chemicals doing different things. Like some decrease taint size. Some are only causing effects when the mother is exposed to phthalates, when the embryo of a boy is between the weeks of eight and 12. Whereas other cases, it's like when your kid is born and between the ages of zero to one only, he's exposed to BPA in a certain way, whether it's topically or ingests then it's like he's likely to have a less developed uh, ball sack and uh, decreased sperm count. So there's just so many issues that medicine, I think, is like, like hard not to going to be the easiest thing to do. Kind of thing. And what they do is they now will take like IVF, for example. There are ways that we can take men's sperm, literally like spin it around, get the best sperm, and then maybe inseminate a woman that way would be like a smarter thing to do. But that sounds very dystopian. And weird. Okay, I yes, have Natalie. so much to add to this <laughs> because of personal life experience that I'm currently going through. Okay. So that sounds so vague, but let me explain this. First of all, I'm curious to know if, so if you start stop smoking and you get more active, the quality does increase? Yes, for men, for men, yeah. For because men. because yes. men have such a uh, high turnover of sperm, that's also why like wet dreams occur. It like is pushing out old sperm. Um, right, because, sorry. Yep, go ahead. Because with women, from what I've researched and know, is that you ha only are born with a certain um, like amount of eggs. Mm -hmm. And once the quality is diminished, there is literally nothing you can do yeah. To create better quality, I have, by the way, terrible quality. Do you oh, really? So that, you, like, you from, figured, from like, from what? Tests how, or? You got tests? How did you that... guys are like, all of a sudden, you guys have so many. No, questions. no, no, but I'm like, how okay? do you, like, can you just self identify as terrible quality? Or, like, what no, did you? No, uh, no, I'm like, well, listen, I like to tell people I'm 29. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I'm going to take that. Yeah, 29. Don't ask. I've been selling people for like five years and I'm 29. <laughs> um, but basically through a process where I ended up like, to be honest, this past summer, me and my friend, me and a bunch of my lady friends 
um, decided that we were like talking about, should we get our AMH levels checked? Which if you don't know what your AMH levels are, they are the quality of your eggs. Hmm. Oh, okay. interesting. So it's not about the quantity, it's the right. quality because yeah. there's a bunch of things obviously that play into fertility, like the quality and how many eggs you actually producing and follicles and all this stuff. Anyways, I have done the AMH test, found out like it was very heartbreaking. I'm dealing with it. Mm -hmm. um, but basically my quality is, I have the quality of a 41 year old woman. Okay. Mm. So that is very, very low for my age. I am 34. So basically, <laughs> I, hate so saying my I hate that they do that. Like, it's so intense to give like an age on it. Like, I know I, I know, get it that. Is such a, like, it's useful, but it, it goes yeah. back to that thing where men never have to be like, what is well, what's yeah. the quality of my sperm? Yeah. I'm 34 and I'm sitting here dealing with my quality. And then I like did all this research and I asked, called so many doctors. I was like, I don't understand why we haven't figured out a solution to yeah. increase the quality. So, like there is like some vitamins I can take that yeah. will help increase it, but there's no like scientific studies. Now with follicles, sorry, this like really got into a no, different- No, 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 no this, this is what so we wanted to talk about because it's really interesting. So, so follicles is a different thing. There is now some like, they're thinking that there is some ways to increase the amount of follicles a woman has um, or able to produce. So for instance, like testosterone androgel is said to believe to increase the amount of follicles because you don't you, you need good quality of eggs and you also need um a lot of follicles if you're doing egg retrieval or ivf mm -hmm. Hmm. so but here's here's another catch that i find so interesting because uh, uh like i'm 34 i'm thinking like do i do egg retrieval you know especially if my quality is low it's not going to get better if anything it's going to decrease um but basically when I spoke to so many doctors, they're like, when you're doing IVF, egg fertilization, embryos, whatever, it doesn't mean you cannot get pregnant naturally. It mm. means that IVF isn't easy. And they're two separate things. This is ah. my understanding. Obviously, you could check this out, but that's what I was told. It's like, you can still theoretically get pregnant and yeah. have a very healthy baby. But for egg retrieval, right. you need a quality. Huh, that's really that's interesting. That's really interesting. Yeah. Like, right? Like and 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 because there's no natural selection when you're removing the eggs, that's right. what I imagine what's happening. They're taking everything. So they don't know which eggs are good or bad. And then also what's crazier about this whole thing is they take all the eggs out, right? For like, say you're just doing egg retrieval. They take out like how many eggs they get. They freeze them. You're not guaranteed anything. You're just, you just have a pile there, but you actually right. don't know the quality. Right, like wow. it may and already be, if it's low quality and then frozen. And there's no it, way it of them testing it. it. That's so intense. There's no way twisting, but with sperm, can, like from yeah. what I read is like, they can like spin it. It takes yeah, about three months to clean it, it yeah. out yeah. and figure it out. And I think that also plays into like the misogyny in the medical yeah. world. Yeah, for sure. Oh my God. That's, it's so sad. Like when you realize the misogyny of all of science, like for example, like one anecdote, is just migraines like they they're so behind on migraine research because it's like 70 percent of people who get migraines are women and so doctors have just ignored this like you know really intense thing that's been happening for so long and only now they're like panicking they're like we give them botox i don't know and then now they're, they're like we give them a bunch of weed like it's like they're all just like because all these people are like now we know these migraines are real and the research is getting pretty quick and fascinating right now. But back in the day, like men weren't experiencing it. And doctors were like, literally like it's hysteria. Like this woman's lying. Like they, I mean, like they're blind in left eye. And now they have a headache. Like, no, you don't. And it's just like so sad because you're right. Like, although the complexity of like um, fertility is different for people, I still really think you're right. Like there's definitely going to be a lot more robust research into sperm just based on even when you go back well, to the late 1800s of how they were studying things. I mean, and that's the thing. It's like, it is always placed, like it is placed on women because it's considered like a women's like job and a woman's yeah, issue. It's awesome. But like, it's all, like when I was speaking to like fertility doctors, the science is still so new. And I, I like said to my friend, I called her and I was like, I can't understand. We've been doing IVF and egg fertilization for like, what, 30, 40 years? Yeah. Why are we only doing studies now? And what, like, he told me this study, which was really interesting, which relates to sperm. You said around 40, it's super damaged. For women, the actual cutoff of like from this particular study that he felt was a good study was that at the age of 37 is when the drop off of amount of eggs happen. Huh. 
So up until we're 30, women, people with eggs are 37, you have a good chance of getting pregnant. The quality is technically good. Like you should have an easy time getting pregnant. Once you turn 37, it diminishes half every year oh. that goes by. Hmm. So, but also that the thing is, that's not, that's just like an average. Right. Like yeah, some yeah. None of have, this is finite. Like yeah, have kids yeah. well. And it's a mix. Yeah. Like, like the, like that's like also when it's looking at fertility issues, it's the sperm, it's, the man and the woman it's the eggs it's the follicle stimulating hormone of the woman it's like the testosterone of the men there's so com it's so complicated that like yeah it's not just like it you can think of it in like these finite terms although sometimes it's used to explain to help people grasp things right i mean for me i think the most predominant way this is explained in the media like fertility issues is if you've watched the handmaid's tale <laughs> <laughs> well that's a, oh my god that's well a, but the yeah. handmaid's tale is about fertility yeah, that's yeah. what happens yeah i mean also control and manipulation but a big thing is that the environment has caused so infertility problems and they put it only on the woman and yeah. if you watch the show or read the books eventually you're like maybe it is the men yeah, the, yeah. it's like and you're like, right. It's Why like this woman's proven to talked about. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually so yeah. like Margaret Atwood is a genius. And even, it's so sad that like these studies are always well, even like, thinking about the, the, the study style. about like dick shrinking. It's like that. It's so sad, but it's so true that that may actually propel like politicians and legislation to change faster than anything. Yeah, to, they're like, for, oh, like, now we think there's a politicians problem. to be like, oh my God, yeah. it shrinks dicks. I think that like, obviously the sperm count matters to fertility, but dick size doesn't. But it's like, that's the thing that will probably peak out even in our comments They'll be like, my video. little boy, my little boys, my little baseball or playing like, boys have a small dick. Men, Shit. just as soon as they realize it's affecting men and have to face that, it is like. Well, men should be scared because I'm here to tell you <laughs> I'm out here replacing men very easily. <laughs> yeah. And I'll tell, there, it's when I was like sleeping with someone, fooling around with someone, and he was like, you don't have a vibrator. And I was like, no, they're very loud. Uh, <laughs> and it's like very hard for me. And then he, he was like, you should get one. And I was like, A, your job? <laughs> like, <laughs> like it's your job to please me. I don't know yeah, why yeah. you're here otherwise. <laughs> And then he left, and then I saw a discount. <laughs> Sorry, this is, this relates. I swear, <laughs> I saw a discount on this like on this particular vibrator that's like quiet, but also like supposed to be really good. It was originally a hundred, and I got it for twenty dollars. German engineered. <laughs> and was, You're like, there's no regulation on the plastic on it. Uh, it's probably you know it's got ten. No, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's like insane. It's like got a 15 year warranty, which is longer warranty than I, any man has ever given me. <laughs> 15 but I got, years. I, wow. But I got it, and I said to myself, I was like, men are so crazy. Like we have sperm banks. Okay. <laughs> We're out here. We don't need your pleasure anymore because this thing made me come in five minutes and it didn't have to talk to it afterwards. <laughs> okay. And when I ordered it, it arrived in 24 hours. Okay. Oh my God. You get a new one every day. <laughs> That's got, so I, true. And a sperm was, egg is where they actually go through the semen and they go, this, this sperm's good. You don't have to deal with any custy 40 plus semen. Exactly. Exactly. So I'm just like, men, you better be careful. Yeah. We also... Listen, we can get a dick in any shape we saw as we want. That's yeah, true. whether it's a baseball bat or a micro penis <laughs> that goes inside like a chimpanzee. One last random <laughs> fact I had come across, not random, obviously, but related to male sperm is they find that when if if looking at pictures in studies, a man looks at an image of a woman with two men, he'll produce more sperm. Because okay. it's competitive. Whereas if he looks oh. at images of just three women, he will not. And it's be and they wow. think it's because when it's like kind of how like gorillas have small dicks and small like balls because they they are like it's like one man is with a lot of women um, because he doesn't have to compete. So I just thought that was interesting that there's so these, the con like, the competition of seeing more men like it, this is heterosexual men. men. Seeing more men around a woman makes them produce more sperm because they're like, I gotta get my yeah, like obviously in there. not conscious, but it's just <laughs> oh like God. their body starts. No, to that's like hot. That's hot. <laughs> this is this, that is hot, and this is my favorite favorite base of information to use and be like, listen. Yeah, I think we need more boys in this equation. True. We're inviting someone else in because you gotta work harder. Yes. Mama needs that sperm. <laughs> It's actually for you. Oh my God. <laughs> MMF. MMMF. Oh -M -M Normalize MMMMF. <laughs> I'm out here normalizing it, okay? <laughs>
<laughs> oh my oh, god, god Natalie. This... Okay, that was amazing. We love you. I feel like, do you have any more amazing facts to share with us? Like, yeah. no pressure. And I just feel like you've brought so much yeah. that I don't want you to feel like there's yeah. anything we left unsaid. She, mean, she's changed her I mean, position. Yeah, her legs like, are up, her teeth out. She's like, well, I mean, we could go for hours. Now that we got the MMF. <laughs> I mean, like, listen, I know a lot about uh, women's fertility right now, but, like, that's not what we're talking about. Yeah, we can yeah. honor we'll that we're talking about yeah. the cock yeah. and its evolutionary history. And, I mean, I hope they evolve to be happy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so where can people find you and reach out, maybe slide into the DMs for some MMF? <laughs> okay, slide into my DMs for MMF at Stalking Natalie on Instagram. <laughs> And Twitter. I'm illiterate on Twitter, so get ready. <laughs> oh, but me too. I always think about that. I'm like, my degree's in science and visual art. I can't write. Every time There's I post no a tweet, I'm stoned, and then I read it the next day, and I'm like, oh, I left out a the and a like period and an at symbol. Sometimes I read my tweets back to me, and I'm like, I'm so embarrassed that 17 people like this. <laughs> Who were they? <laughs> What's wrong with them? <laughs> oh, well, we uh, well, love you honestly, so much. Honestly, I would love to have you back to talk about yeah. female anatomy and fertility. Yeah. And I feel like I have so much to learn. Yeah. Like, as a gay man, especially, I, I sometimes, like, I want to support all that education, but feel so detached because obviously I do not engage with like female genitalia. So we're going to have you back for that. And also for our episode on pre-cum. <laughs> I can't wait for the pre-cum. Yes. We should also have a sex ed series where you come and help teach us about all these things. <laughs> oh my God. Well, thank, thank you so much, much for being on the pod, for coming thank and visiting us. Thank you for having us, me. And hopefully we'll see you soon. Bye. Peace. <laughs>